Oh boy, another Actman L. It's been a little while since he's had one, although he has had a few videos that I thought were just kind of man kind of shit, but none were as bad as his Arena Shooters video, which many people, myself included, predicted as soon as he put Gordon Freeman in the thumbnail for Arena Shooters and how they've supposedly fallen. But nonetheless, we were all willing to hear him out and it was shit. So here we are. But before we go any further, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. This is not the end of Ackman's career. This is nothing that bad. It's a simple L take. This isn't a mask off moment like it was with Jim, nor is it realistically the end of someone's career like it was with Sean. This is simply some well-deserved criticism for a bad take. And I know I've made two other videos on Ackman back in the past when I said I was done with him, I wanted to act like a little bitch, blah to fucking blah, just because he had bad takes. And I regret that decision. Those videos turned out shit because of it and because of other things. However, there is a certain clip from one of those videos that is aged like the finest of wines. I never expected them to get a new game because, let's face it, 3D platformers that don't have Mario in the title are a rare breed nowadays. Oh totally man, Mario single-handedly squashed this whole genre by making a monopoly on the 3D platform genre. I mean fuck, you'd have an easier time finding a lobby in Battlefront 2 on the OG Xbox, they're that rare of a breed. I mean, they must be. You said it was, after all. And you wouldn't make a baseless claim like that without doing some research now, would you? Nah, of course not. Oh yeah, when I bring that up, you know this is gonna be a good one. And as one final point I feel like I should dive into before we get into the actual video itself, Ackman has now had to explain what the point of his video is, which if you had to explain what the point of your video is instead of letting the video do that itself, it's a pretty good sign that the video is shit. Just a general rule of thumb there. But anywho, he had to explain that he isn't talking about how the indie shooters scene is going off. He had to explain that his video is all about how they've fallen out of relevance, which yes, no shit. Except the video tries to frame it as though the genre is dead in the water completely and can never recover. And that's why it's rustled so many jimmies. And the reasons he gives in the video, I can and will disagree with almost all of them. But there's one that he didn't bring up, and it's honestly kind of shocking, but at the same time not really because it's Actman. See, there's one really big reason as to why arena shooters aren't as mainstream as they once were, and that's the fact they can't be monetized as much as the current trends in gaming can, with battle passes and all that shit. I'm not saying it's impossible to monetize an arena shooter. Doom Eternal is a good example. You had cosmetics you can buy, or you can do the challenges to unlock them and shit. And just about all the indie shooters that I love, they come with either a digital art book, a soundtrack you can buy, something of the sort. But if you were to try and apply modern gaming business practices like battle passes and such like that, it would either fuck up the game because they'd have to lock gameplay items behind that battle pass and make you grind for the ability to have a shotgun or the ability to punch your own shotgun blast in ultra kill, or they would go the cosmetic route only, which wouldn't really make sense since these games are low poly by design for the nostalgia's sake and to keep that frame rate high, so nobody's gonna give as much of a shit about their cosmetics as they would in something like Call of Duty or Halo. And if we were to live in an alternate reality where Ultra Kill had cosmetics and such like that that you had to buy instead of the system where you can just set the sliders to whatever color you want, people would say, okay, I don't care, I'm just gonna play the game as is and not bother with any of those cosmetics. So the business model just doesn't work. So these games have to rely on only the game sales, extra content like art books and soundtracks and such like that, or in New Blood's case, the cum rags. Yes, those are in stock again, and yes, I will shame cube anyone I see who uses them. I'm kidding, of course. But yeah, I think that's the biggest reason as to why arena shooters aren't as mainstream as they once were. So anyway, without any more filibustering, let's get right into it. You ever wonder why trends come and go? Not really, since the definition of trend, at least the one that pertains to technology, outright says it only lasts for a short period of time. So it's pretty self-explanatory as to why things come and go. I know you struggle with the definition of certain words, like arena shooter, as we're gonna find out. But the rest of us, nah. Wolfenstein 3D is credited as being the first FPS title anybody really cared about. The first avatar, if you will. But id Software didn't invent the concept. If you think about it, first-person shooters were merely an evolution of arcade and space shooters. Just a change in perspective. Oh my. You mean to tell me that arcade shooters and first-person shooters happen to be, you know, the same thing? Just a change in perspective? And that's literally in the title? God damn, I never would have guessed that. I mean, it's not like at the end of the day, they're still arcade shooters. You're just blowing my mind here, man. 
and battle royales are merely the evolution of arena shooters and now extraction brs are the hot thing and so on and so forth about a week ago i told a buddy of mine i was working on a video about the rise and fall of arena shooters and he looked at me and he was like i don't even know what those are and i guess that's the point that's how far out of relevance they've fallen so we're gonna base this entire video off of your imaginary friend because we don't know if he actually said this or not or who he even is. But we're gonna base this entire video off him saying that he doesn't know what an arena shooter is, which if he doesn't, then I'm sorry to hear that his Google is broken. Or that he's just now getting into gaming. But hey, what can you do about that? But knowing that's the reason that inspired this video, well, it makes sense why it turned out so shit. But why? Why? Well, let's clarify. What exactly is an arena shooter? Well, typically it's a game characterized by ultra fast movement. Things like bunny hopping, rocket jumping. You got an arsenal of weapons to choose from. Iconic things like a double barreled shotgun or chainsaws, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, space guns, plasma rifles, all that cool shit. These games often had a weapon wheel or allowed players to hold every single weapon in the game at once. No two weapon system to speak of. Power ups, health, ammo, and armor are all found on the map and do not regenerate for the player when out of combat. I put the text up on the screen so that you can all see it, but the key word you should take away from this is that it's typically all these things doesn't always have to be in order for it to be an arena shooter. It just so happens that all the good ones follow these rules. But it is in an outright requirement. Because there are certain examples he's gonna bring up that, uh, don't really fit this definition, but he still calls them arena shooters. And we're gonna get into those. Bingo! As you can see, they recharge a lot faster! When they don't fucking pussy, don't even get them These also tend to most of the best fucking soundtracks. You can summarize the spirit of arena shooters by using the classic Unreal announcer. While some might argue that the first true arena shooters were Quake and Unreal Tournament, it's obvious where those games got their inspiration from. Some of the most revered games of all time are arena shooters. But lately it seems nobody really cares. At least not about their multiplayer. Single player, yeah, Doom Eternal's kicked ass. I want you all to remember Doom Eternal, that he brought this up. Because uh, it's about to fuck him over in less than a minute. So, just keep that in mind. But like, why does an 11 year old game like CSGO continue to dominate Steam charts while a game fresh off the press like Quake Champions can barely scratch four digits? This isn't what I was talking about in the last clip, but uh, Quake Champions has been out for six years. I don't know how you think that's fresh off the press. Like, holy shit. And I mentioned this on Twitter, or at least I alluded to it, but this kind of leads into one of my biggest problems with this video of Ackman's where he tries to plant this entire genre as dead in the water. See, Quick Champions has always kind of struggled because it has a lot of issues with its gameplay and such, but as of late, it saw a recent boost in popularity. And you know why? It wasn't because the developers finally got their shit together and made a really good update, or because people just suddenly decided, hey, we're gonna play Quick Champions because there ain't nothing else to play now. No, you know why Quick Champions got such a boost in these last few months? It was because of one man and his popularity with arena shooter fans, particularly in the indie scene. That man is Gianni. Is it Gianni or Gianni? How, how the fuck do you say his Italian center name, you fucking muffin? Ah, whatever. Anyway, if it wasn't for Fraggy Fridays, Quake Champions would be suffering a whole lot more. And I'm just gonna call him G for simplicity's sake, but G, he outright said that fucking Quake Champions wouldn't be what it is right now if it weren't for all the support he got on those Fraggy Friday streams because he happens to love the arena shooter genre and doesn't want to see it die. So he used his influence over fans of the genre and fans in general of his content to have fun and revitalize the genre, to give him a little bit of hope. I don't know why Ackman wouldn't do that if he pretends to care as much as he does in this video, so... Oh well. Like I said, he could easily provide support to these games that he considers are struggling or they're falling out of style. But he doesn't. And it's quite telling. Anywho, back onto the shit. Is there no mass market appeal for these so-called boomer shooters? Well, there still is. But as we'll see later on in this video, studios didn't quite figure out how to make these games appeal to that broader audience. You might have played Doom 2016's multiplayer and thought, well... That felt antiquated. I, I feel like a 40-year-old man still clinging to his childhood playing this. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Perhaps you bought into the craze of lawbreakers uh, and later tried to hide your shame about that. Though developers have tried to revitalize the arena shooter genre, it seems none have really been successful. And since lawbreakers, it appears no one has dared try. Meanwhile, at least not about their multiplayer. Single player, yeah, Doom Eternal's kicked ass. So no one has tried to revitalize this genre since Lawbreakers. 
yet he brings up Doom Eternal in Doom 2016, which, correct me if I'm wrong, came out after Lawbreakers. Let me, let me check that real quick. <laughs> Point still stands that Doom Eternal is a good example of games that have revitalized the genre. Then you got things like Shadow Warrior, Proteus, Ultra Kill, Postal Brain Damage, all these other amazing games in that genre, but apparently they just don't exist. Act Thanos snapped his fingers and said, nope, no one's tried since Lawbreakers. But why? Well, that's the big question of the day. Before we tackle the fall, we have to take a trip back to witness the rise. And I'm gonna gloss over this little history lesson on the FPS genre in its beginnings, for the most part anyways because you can just Google and do the research yourself, or you can go to other channels like Civi11 or G-Man Lives. But there are a few points of contention I need to talk about in this because Ackman gets things blatantly wrong, or he just doesn't go into things enough to explain why they are the way they are. And those happen to be... Fun fact, at one point the term first-person shooter was less commonly used on internet forums than the term Doom clone. That's because the term first-person shooter literally hadn't come into fruition yet. So people just went with Doom Clone because that's what it was like. Kind of like how the term Stamina Action RPG, which is way more accurate to call it, didn't really catch on until barely recently, if even that. And instead people call them Souls-likes, because it's just simpler to say. Though Marathon never became a household name, the game proved that competent alternatives to Doom could be made. And as time would pass, Bungie would be the ones to come back with a vengeance against the arena shooter that defied them. So you know why Marathon never became as much of a household name or as viable as Doom was? Because it was only available on Mac platforms, and thanks to Doom's popularity and the ease of access of the Windows platform, it became the dominant operating system. And so a lot of people missed out on Marathon. Thankfully there's LF1 now, so you can play the entire trilogy for free. And then in 1995, George Lucas was sitting there like, you know, before I ruin the next trilogy of Star Wars films, I want to usher in the golden age of Star Wars video games. Bam! Star Wars Dark Forces comes out. The first official FPS game for Star Wars. Dark Forces is definitely not an arena shooter. Again, it's only a retro shooter in the sense that it's made on the build engine. Other than that, it has absolutely nothing in common with any Doom clones or anything of the sort. But one of the most important changes Dark Forces introduced was this radical new concept to FPS. L looking up and down. <laughs> Wrong. Nope, that one belongs to Heretic, which just so happens to have come out before Dark Forces. Google doesn't say exactly when Dark Forces came out, but it just says 1995, which Heretic came out in 1994. The end of 94, but 94 all the same. So, nice try. So FPS was starting to evolve, but Dark Forces had no multiplayer, so it didn't directly threaten the other online arena shooters. So it didn't have a multiplayer, but it still didn't threaten the online shooters. But if we were to use that same logic in reverse and say, well, these indie shooters exist, but because they don't have a multiplayer, or at least most of them don't, then they don't threaten the loss of arena shooters, or how they're dying. Just further proof this video is a fucking disaster and a half and we're not even at the halfway point. Again, at this point, arena shooters were the only type of shooter. It's like you were you were moving fast, of course you were. But this entire stigma that FPS titles couldn't work on console changed with GoldenEye because Rareware actually stopped for a second and said, hey, does the player need to go fast? Turns out, no. In fact, who would have thought slowing down movement and forcing players to make methodical decisions in combat could even be more interesting. You know, there might there might be something to that style of gameplay. GoldenEye didn't have an online multiplayer, so again, it didn't directly affect the popularity of Quake or other arena shooters. So while he doesn't directly say it, he considers GoldenEye an arena shooter, which is wild to say the least, but all those comments about how, oh, making it slow, turns out you didn't need to go that fast and such like that. What did I say earlier? I put the text up on the screen so that you can all see it, but the key word you should take away from this is that it's typically all these things. It doesn't always have to be in order for it to be an arena shooter. It just so happens that all the good ones follow these rules. But it is isn't an outright requirement. This shit writes itself. But before that would happen, id Software saw the success of GoldenEye and was like, Oh yeah, Rare, well played. But well, we can do that too. Yo, Midway, go make Doom 64 for the kitties. Yep, Doom 64 was totally made in response to GoldenEye that came out five months after Doom 64. I mean, fuck, id Software, they were just full of so many profits, they knew they had to make it. So they jumped the shark a little bit too early, but they made it all the same. That's why it didn't really set the world on fire. It wasn't because, oh, it was just Doom on the console, or it was Doom on a Nintendo console, so people thought, oh, it's not gonna have as much blood. No, it was because they were too early with it. They just played the cards way too early. 
A Google search could have prevented all this, but apparently it's asking way too much of them. But 1998 was a year of innovation for shooters in general, and several new subgenres started to pop up. Metal Gear Solid emphasized stealth and discouraged combat. Uh -huh. Okay, I get 1998 was a good change for gaming as a whole instead of shooters as a whole. But why are we talking about Metal Gear? Yes, there's a first person mode you can go into, but that's not an arena shooter. And if because you can pick up things on the map instead of having them load in and you have even starts or whatever... It, 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 this just makes no sense. <laughs> By this logic, Resident Evil is an arena shooter to this guy. Holy shit. And I'm skipping over the rest of this little history lesson because he just jumbles a bunch of different shooters together with arena shooters like Medal of Honor and fucking Time Splitters. They're shooters, but they're not arena shooters, so... <sighs> whatever. I'm just not even gonna get involved. And I'm not even gonna touch Half-Life because I haven't played Half-Life yet. So... Maybe it is an arena shooter, maybe it isn't. I don't know. My friends say that it's not, so I'm gonna go with their word. And unlike that, man, I can prove they said it, so... Yay me. But the Earth began to crumble, and in 2001, the fall of arena shooters was firmly set in motion, and it couldn't be stopped. You know, I feel like there was one other person who tried to say that Halo was responsible for shooters going on a decline, but I don't know who might have said that, and uh, I don't know if they had any other really, really bad takes regarding certain indie shooters, but uh, what do I know? Anywho, I'll let Act Mayo go on to a little Halo history lesson here. The legacy and importance of Combat Evolved should be no secret to any gamer, at least of all my audience. You see, most arena shooters of the time and its emulators like Counter-Strike were still very hardcore experiences, but Halo appealed to both. It was designed as a party shooter game, something that offered the same casual four-player fun of any Nintendo game, but in a much more mature sci-fi setting. With System Link, LAN parties for console could now emulate what online multiplayer had been doing for years. Now, some debate has been had over whether Halo is an arena shooter or not. While I think it's much more similar to this older genre of game, than something like Call of Duty, anyone who's played Quake or Doom will tell you, fuck no, Halo isn't an arena shooter. Movement is much slower, you can only carry two weapons, not to mention melee and grenades weren't treated as their own weapons on a dial, regenerating health, etc. So I could bring up the fact that he once again considered Goldeneye an arena shooter despite its slow movement and such, but that's not the only thing that stands out. Instead, I want to start a war in the comments of is Halo an arena shooter? Personally, I say yes it was, but only in the original trilogy. After Reach, it dropped that card entirely. And I gave most of my reasons in Thunderstruck's video here, so I'll just leave that up on the screen so you can all pause and read. And the only thing I'd really have to add to it is Combat Evolved is more of a party game, yes, but it has arena shooter mechanics, such as the weapon pickups, the even starts, the health pickups, so on and so forth. It's simply its own style of arena shooter, and again, it has mostly a modular design for the party game setup, but it still has those arena shooter mechanics to it. So, yes, I consider Halo, or at least it used to be, an arena shooter. In the modern days, not really, it's its own separate beast entirely. But let me know your thoughts and let me know how wrong I am on that. And you got yourself another visit from Future Country here. Yeah, you probably checked the time and realized I haven't covered nearly enough of what's wrong with Ackman's video here. But we're at the end of my video because you're getting a two-parter. Potentially. I decided to front load this over everything else because, uh, Actman happens to be, you know, malding on Twitter. And he said he's considering making a video dedicated to responding to all the criticism he's gotten from this and his Yu-Gi-Oh! video. I didn't watch that one, so I don't know how bad it might have been, but I kind of hope he does make a video on that particularly because he's trying to brush off all this very legitimate criticism as just a bunch of people nitpicking and arguing semantics and shit like that. So act bitch, I hope you see this video, and I hope it's in your little response. I'm not holding my breath for it, but at the same time, BRING IT IN! And I also decided to make this a two-part thing because there's just so much to do and I don't have that open of a schedule right now. Both for videos and in my personal life, I just got a lot of other shit I need to do and I decided to front load this, that way I can get it out just in time for if Axeman does do that video. And because realistically, this is my best stuff that I have on this, because everything in the next half... And I, I just mostly end up repeating myself because Ackman brings up even more games that aren't arena shooters, repeats a whole lot of the same points he's brought up already, and gets into very, very subjective areas like what gamers want. 
because, you know, he totally speaks for everyone. So anyways, maybe I'll do that part two. I mean, I already recorded it, but I just don't got the time or energy to edit that right now. And I got a few other things I want to do first. So we'll see about if there will be a part two to this. If not, this will certainly do for me. But nevertheless, I hope you all enjoyed this video here. As always, thank you for all the support the channel's gotten, and thank you for checking this video out. You guys are the fucking best, and I will talk to y'all later.